Hi, Amy here with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings, and I've had this request, and I keep on promising to do it, so today I'm gonna do it. Um, I did a large entertainment center table uh, for my basement and um, with the Patina products from Dixie Belle. It, it has like a maple leaf look to it. I'll insert a picture real quick. Okay, so everyone's asked me how, to, how, how I've done this, and I keep on saying I'll do a video, I'll do a video. Well, I came across this little tiny little table. Yeah, see how skinny it is? It's got a little drawer on this side. And um, I'm gonna do this to match, because it's gonna go next to, I have a big oversized um, chair with ottoman, and this would be perfect sitting right next to it for putting drinks on. And so I figured, what better way to show you how to do it than to actually show you how to do it. <laughs> okay, so I'm starting off. This color here is collard greens. Love this color. It's such a, a rich, deep, um, earthy green. I love this color. I've done a lot of pieces with the, um, the collard greens. This has got two coats of paint on it. And I'm going to be using the Dixie Belle Iron. And I'll be using the... Um, green spray okay first thing you need to do you have to shake it up really well because there's little bits of metal in this paint and so if you don't have it stirred up you won't have the metal in the paint which is what you need to react for the reaction to happen so you shake it up really good I just got to use it outside to tap it on the ground so I get the lid open and I just use a ch uh, chip brush. It looks a little short because every time I do a patina project, I take a scissors because I don't want the patina product to go down my drain. I'm sure it's okay, but you know, we're on septic. I'm out in the country. Um, so every time I use the patina products, I just take a scissors and cut off <laughs> the hardened part and uh, then I have a fresh brush. So I just keep chopping these down next to nothing then I throw them away. Okay, so we're gonna be stippling it on so I can get a little bit of texture. Okay, it's a deep gray. You're gonna hear fireworks in the background because it's 4th of July. <laughs> I've been painting trim in my basement and um, uh, so I'm already in my paint clothes. So I figured I'd come out here and do this for you. Now, I'm gonna do it like a random design. I kind of will do the, the maple leaf look, but kind of not because I don't want it to be exactly the same. But you, oops, I got a loose brist bristle from cutting. Okay. So you just stipple it on where you want. And I think I got my, my uh, chip brush a little too short because it's pretty stiff. You can see the little gray right there. And so you just wanna, you can go in and out, making your own little design. Your first coat is like your base coat. You have to do two coats of this. Your first coat has to dry completely, and then your second coat, you have to apply the spray. Um, I'll show you this close up once I get it on here. But um, the second coat, you have to apply the spray while it's wet, otherwise it won't work. You can't skip that step. And I have other patina videos um, up as well where I did candlesticks. I like to patina a lot of stuff. I've got a written blog. Um, I just did a Bombay chest that a lot of people ask me how I did it, and I did do a written blog on that. Um, and it's on my blog page, uh, www.ajsvintagedesigns.com. It's on my blog page. And so you, you can see the jagged edge I'm just making. I'm just pouncing it willy-nilly all over. Because I'm gonna keep the center green, and the, the rust is gonna look like it's growing towards the center. And I'm gonna, do it a little random all over. Just making sure my first coat gets everywhere where I'm going to want that patina to happen. Okay. And I have no plan whatsoever. I'm just pouncing. Just wherever I feel like pouncing. It works a little bit better if your chip brush is longer. But... So it's kind of, so as you see, it's very random. I should be up in my sewing room balcony watching the fireworks right now. But 
I just felt the urge to paint and I keep on promising this tutorial. I was gonna go live, but um, we're also expected to have a rainstorm coming in and so I didn't know how well my internet connection was gonna be. And the last thing I wanna do is do a project like this that's hard to repeat because I, you know, I won't be doing another green and orange. I'm just gonna kind of make a pattern so I can kind of see where I'm going with this. There, you can kind of see I'm just gonna kind of go all over. But I was afraid that if I went live, um, I would have lost connection. And then you know, the risk with doing a live is um, on Facebook is that once you did your project, if it didn't get recorded, your tutorial is no longer there. I mean, it doesn't exist. And so I'm doing it pre-recorded. And just keep pouncing. You can kind of see. See how random the spikes and everything are? I love, I mean, I love to do patina. If I could patina every piece of furniture that I had, I would. But. Sorry for the noise. I'm also, the table's bouncing around on me because I'm pouncing so hard. I'm gonna add some bronze in here too, so I'm gonna leave some spots open to add some bronze in just for some added dimension and, and look. Dixie Bell has a new gilding wax out that um, it's called the turquoise teal. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. I did, it, I, I did the rust patina on some hardware that I'm putting on a piece. And it just looked a little drab just having just the rust on there. So I used the patina uh, or not the patina, the um, teal turquoise, uh, teal turquoise uh, gilding wax on the, the patina and it turned out beautiful. It really gave it some, uh, some extra look to it. Okay, got a little thick in some, some places. If I got it too thick, it's gonna take forever to dry and I wanna get this video done tonight. So I'm just kinda pouncing off some of the thicker areas. See, there's, there's not a lot of thought put into this. I'm just kind of just randomly all over the place. I'm gonna show you what I've got. I am, like I said, I'm in my page clothes, but here's what I've got so far. So you can see it's kind of just very random. The center will stay green and everywhere you see it looks, it's got a gray purplish hue to it. That is what's gonna turn rusty. So that's how I started. And I'm gonna try to get some to drip off the edge. Just for some added fun and interest. So I'm gonna make it drip off the edge here. And on the corner there, maybe. Just right along this edge where I have the paint. Have it drip down here. Have it drip down randomly here. I don't want too much. So you can see I just kind of let it flow over the edge. And let's do a little over here. Tiny little lines. I'm just barely going over the edge. And some over here. Okay, so now. Okay, we're gonna to to add the bronze. So now I'm gonna use the bronze, the bronze patina paint. And I'm just going to highlight a couple areas. Just put it in randomly. Okay. 
You don't want a lot of it. I'll show you. I'm just randomly, same thing I did with the iron, doppling, doppling it right on the border of the iron patina, just for some added fun and interest. Okay. Not doing a lot of it because I, I want it to match my other piece. And my other piece is predominantly the rust. But by adding a little bit of iron. Just gives it a little pop of fun. Some on the edge. Those fireworks are loud. Okay, I feel like I need a little bit over here. Here. If I don't like any area, I'll just go, when I come back with my second coat of iron, I will cover up the bronze with the iron. The corners of them. Okay, now I'll show it to you. So I added the bronze. And I did the front drawer too, so I got to be careful where I grab it. So can you see that? So I just amp, you know, it doesn't look that great right now. So I added the bronze and you can see this front section, this front section right here, I'm not really feeling. So I'll fix that when I do my second coat of iron. But, got a little goober here, I need to fix. Too much. Okay, so now I'm gonna let it wait and dry. I got another big goober here. If you have it too much, too thick, like a big chunk, it takes forever to dry. So, gotta pounce that out. Alrighty then. I'm just pouncing out some of the, I'm seeing some thick areas that were just, are gonna take too long to dry. They're just like really thick. Okay. I said it many times, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna let it dry. And uh, I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so now it's dried. Kinda looks a little camouflaged. And now on to the next step. Okay. Okay, the next step I'm not gonna spray the patina onto the, the tabletop. I'm actually gonna dump it into a little bowl and I'm gonna be using my chip brush. But I wanna have this ready because the minute I start painting the iron and the patina paint, uh, the iron and the bronze patina paint on here, I have to apply the green um, activation spray. It's the patina spray in green. Now if you're using iron and you want the rust look, Anytime you're using the iron paint, then you really need to use the green patina because the green patina is what activates with the iron paint. Now with the bronze, the bronze you can use green or blue. I'm using green for both. But um, for the bronze and the copper uh, patina paints, you can use the green spray or the blue spray. But if you're using the iron, which is the dark gray, you need to use the green because that is the color that needs to activate the orange rust, okay? But I need to pre-pour this into the bowl because it has to be ready because the minute I, I get the second coat on here, I have to start putting on the patina um, because it has to be on here when the paint is wet. So I've got to shake this up real good. 
Oh, it's splattering all over. Okay, you need very little. I mean, you can see I have very little in there. Okay, the first color I'm gonna be working with is the iron, and I'm gonna put it on the exact same spots as I did before. Being generous. Just dabbing right on top of the same spots. And if you, have, if you, put, it, if you put it on nice and thick, you, you got some time, because it, it took it almost like a half hour to dry before because I had it on so thick. And I can always sand it down a little bit if it's too like raised or too clumpy when it's done, when it's completely dried. I can sand it down a little bit just to flatten my surface so it's nice and smooth. And when I mean sand it, I use the quadruple zero steel wool. That's like my secret weapon for everything. I use that constantly. I'm getting everywhere where I had the gray paint before or the iron paint. Just, you can see I'm just pouncing it on because I want the texture. You can brush it on, but then when you get the patina on, it's going to be a brushed effect. I want it to look, rust doesn't really happen in a brushed type effect usually. So I want it to look like even though wood wouldn't naturally patina like this, but I want kind of I want the realism of it, so I'm pouncing everywhere where I got the gray. You can hear the fireworks. It is midnight. Midnight. We, I would have never thought of ever doing fireworks at midnight around people's homes. People are trying to sleep. Except for me, I'm always up painting, but I think it's ridiculous to do fireworks after 10 o'clock at night. This being midnight is ridiculous that they're still shooting off fireworks. And it's neighbors down the road. Being very mindful as to where I've got the bronze. And make sure you're only going where you have, and try to stay as the best you can, just in the areas you already have this iron paint on there that's dried, because it'll only react where it has the two coats. There's no cheating. It won't react if you just have the one coat on for some reason. It's the science behind it. It will not react if it doesn't have two coats. So if you get this iron paint someplace that you don't want any patina or where you want to see the green, it's not going to patina, it's going to show out gray, it's just going to show as gray because it's the first coat. You have to have two coats. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know exactly how it works, but it works and it's fun. I'm gonna wash my paint, make sure it's not drying. If it is, then I gotta redap the areas. I mean, those aren't little fireworks either. Those are loud fireworks, They're big ones. The cannon type fireworks. Being down at the angle that I am right now makes it easier because I can see the shine of the previous paint a lot easier. I can actually see where I've put the paint before. I'm still using that same chip brush from before. It hasn't dried up yet. I mean, seriously, I'll keep cutting these things if there's nothing left before I throw them away. I'm cheap that way. Okay. 
The thing I can't see is where I went over the edge. Here we go. Everywhere I went over the edge with the gray before I switched to the bronze. You guys hear those fireworks? My poor dog. My husband's inside with the dog. The dog is just going crazy. I feel so sorry for pets during this time of year. We don't do fireworks just because of our animals. Okay, just going over this. Make sure I got it. Everywhere, everywhere that's starting to dry, is I re-wet it. Gotta move quickly. Okay, now onto the bronze. I'm not even gonna change brushes. I should, but I don't have enough chip brushes around here. Okay, doing the bronze. And starting to dry already faster than I thought. So I'm using the a fresh chip brush. Where'd my fresh chip brush go? Here it is. Okay. Now I'm using my fresh chip brush, saturated in with the patina spray, and to start applying it. Dabbing it right on top of everywhere that there's any patina on whatsoever. Just dabbing it on the if you get a little bit on your paint, that's no problem. You can either touch it up, sometimes it'll wipe off and it won't be noticeable. But if it is noticeable, you can always paint over that section with your green paint. Oh, my husband doesn't mind, I'm getting this on the garage floor. Okay, see I'm just dabbing, just like I did with the other. Dabbing the patina on. Dipping and dabbing. And the rust takes the rust takes a good 24 hours before you really see it. But the green patina on the bronze sometimes can show up pretty quickly. Okay, then my battery dies, but the problem is I had to move quickly because if I didn't, it would dry. And so here's what it looks like wet. So you can see it's a mess. It is wet. <laughs> and I just have to let this dry. And it'll probably take overnight. Um, we'll see, it hasn't started reacting yet. Okay, so like right now, all you can see it's wet. The patina is setting on all the patina paint and um, hopefully it's gonna turn out as good as it did for my table but this is exactly what I did now patina is unpredictable uh, it it does what it wants to do and you don't have a lot of control over it you have a little control over what you do um, so this is the fun part I get to see what this is gonna look like tomorrow morning so it is you know after 12 o'clock at night now fireworks have finally ended and I just have to let this patina sit on here overnight and I'll let you see what it looks like tomorrow and then I will have, all I have to do is I'll show you how I clean up, um, not my brushes and stuff, but how I clean up this top to make it nice um, and then I will end up putting a coat of gator hide on it, um, probably two coats of gator hide uh, because this is gonna have drinks set on it on a regular basis. It's gonna be right next to a chair. So it will be covered with gator hide but I will show you tomorrow. It'll be at the end of this video but it'll be tomorrow. Um, what I do next. So just gotta sit here and let the paint dry. Okay, I'm back. It's the next day and look at the patina. Now the copper didn't really, it only came out in a couple spots because I think since I didn't change brushes, um, then it was predominantly iron on the brush and so the iron and the rust took over more than the bronze did. So next time if I was gonna do this, my table downstairs, I didn't do bronze at all. I just thought I'd try something different. But since I didn't switch brushes between the iron and the bronze, 
the, the iron took over. So you can see, look at how cool that is. Isn't that cool? So now it's got some chunkiness to some parts. And so I'm just gonna smooth it out. The little steel wool. You can see the dust. You can see the dust flying out. I'm just gonna smooth it out just a little bit. Just because it has, I have a lot of chunks and areas. And I don't want it so chunky. So I'm just smoothing it out with a little steel wool. Because I don't want to use sandpaper and actually sand it completely off. I'm just knocking some of the high points. I, I, I put it on so thick I will have, a, I will have some high points. But um, that was one of the reasons I stippled it though because I wanted texture. But I, if I don't want that much texture, I'm just wiping over the rust. And just removing some of those big giant high points. And I'm just using a little bit of steel wool, triple or quadruple zero steel wool. Then it does leave a powdery residue. So I always then go back, I'm gonna dust this off a little bit. And be careful because I have it right next to a, a piece I just did in sandbar, which is a light beige. Okay, I just take some of the dust off. And then I'm gonna rinse, I'm gonna spray it down. This is kind of scary, it's gonna turn dark. And I'm gonna wipe it off. The, the orange will come back, so don't be scared. I, I wipe off all my pieces because I don't want that residue left behind. So I'm just wiping it down with a wet cloth. It'll turn dark, see that? But it, the orange will come back. So don't panic when you're doing this. But I always wipe it down. I don't want that dusty, that like chalky residue left on my piece. So I'm just wiping it down with some water. I do this to all my patinas. Okay, so I wiped off all the dust that was left behind. And you'll see, so like right now it looks pretty dark. You'll see now it looks pretty dark. The orange will come back. So I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna put a top coat of gator hide on top of this. So let's let this dry real quick. You'll see that the orange will come back and we'll put the gator hide right on it and it's ready to go. Okay, so now it's back to its orange and I'm gonna put a, uh, two coats of gator hide. I'm just gonna show you the first coat. I keep my gator hide in a FIFO bottle because taking the lid on and off and on and off to get the crusties around the outside of the lid. Well, those crusties when you're pouring the gator hide into a separate dish to do the dipping, those little beads or dried gator hide can get into your, onto your sponge and then get on your surface and then you're picking it out. Um, so I always keep, I keep it in a FIFO bottle now so that I know I'm having fresh gator hide when I'm um, putting it on a project. So this, I'm just gonna wipe it across. Just an even strokes. This is gonna make it waterproof so I can put drinks on it. And straight, even coats. I don't know if you can see that shine. I'll show you in a minute. It's gonna take a couple coats, maybe more. I go through gator hide. I buy the smaller, I used to buy the big ones. Now I just buy a couple of the smaller ones. So I'm only having one container open and I'm getting through it and I'm not storing gator hide in the bigger container. So I'll buy two smaller containers now just to be on the safe side because I use it so often. Okay. This could be a pretty good match to my one in the basement that I have, that I showed you pictures of. Kind of disappointed that I didn't get my bronze to show up, but that's my own fault for not switching brushes. Is 
but since it was, this project is just for me, I was okay with taking that risk because my other one downstairs is strictly the rust patina. Get some build up of the rust right there, a little chunk that I don't want in there. Okay, so that is it. Put some on the front drawer. I wanna lock in that patina. The patina, if you don't seal it, especially if you're on a, a metal surface, as long as air is hitting it, it will continue to patina. So if you wanna stop the patina, and you like it where it's at, and you, you wanna stop it from going any further, then put a top coat on it. That keeps air from getting to it, and then it'll stop like reacting or processing. So I always top coat my patinas, because once I got it where I like it, I want it to stay that way. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let this dry for a couple hours, and then I'm gonna put at least one to two more coats on it. Now, it kinda changed the color, but that's okay. It will go back to orange, don't, don't panic. It will go back to orange. Anytime this patina gets wet, it changes colors until it dries again. Um, so it will go back to orange as soon as it's done drying. I'm gonna give it a couple hours, and I'm gonna come back out. I'm gonna go rinse out my sponge. As long as you rinse these right away, then, um, as long as you rinse them right away, I know that the Gator Hide is waterproof, water, water repellent, but as long as it's wet, you can get it off your sponge, you can get it out of your brushes. Uh, you just have to wash them right away. So, I hate to waste that little tiny droplet I have in there, so I'm looking at what, what can I Gator Hide real quick. I don't have anything that is ready for Gator Hide. <laughs> okay, well I guess I'm gonna end up throwing away that little bit that's left, because you don't wanna put that back in the container. You do not wanna contaminate your Gator Hide. And I do put it in the FIFO bottle, it's so much better. Okay, well, I will be back to show you as soon as this is dry. Okay, I'm back. The gator hide is on it. And as you can see, the orange color came back. I'll take some pictures. The shine, you know, it hits the shine when the, the light above. But you can see the random pattern to the rust. It, is, it adds a lot of character, and I've got the gator hide on it, so it's all protected. There's not going to be any chalkiness or any rust that comes off. I'm gonna be able to put glasses on this with no worry about water rings or water damage. Um, my table that I did for my basement, um, I did, I was thinking about selling it when I made it and I fell in love with it and decided it matched our basement so I kept it. But my son has been using it as his workstation through most of his internship. So it's been having laptops on it, um, his Starbucks glass that leaves the water that comes down the glass and it wipes bright clean. So I love the skater hide. But this is how it turned out. Now, there's only a couple little spots where the green showed up. So as you can see, you know, some of the green showed up here and right in there, and then right there. Let me zoom in. See, so the green didn't show up as a bright green, I think, and this is the gray. That's where I did not get any patina spray on, so it left this gray. But I think next time, like I said, I am gonna use separate brushes. Um, this is where the green was at. But it does give it some added character and interest, some different colors. See how rusty that is? And there's another spot right there where I didn't get any patina on my gray iron paint. So I can leave that or I can put some more green paint on it, but I decided to leave it. So there it is. See how rusty the corners got? So this is gonna be a perfect match to my entertainment table. So next to the couch, it's gonna look really good and it's nice and smooth. Okay, so as I promised, I, I did the tutorial for you so you saw how I did my entertainment table and um, I absolutely love to patina things. I patinaed the candlesticks. I patinaed glass vases. I have patinaed um, a top of a table. I'll put in at the end. I'll put in a little collection of some of the things that I saw pictures of, of patinas that I've done. I think my favorite one is my vanity, my bathroom vanity, which is also featured on the back of uh, Dixie Bell's product magazine now. I was so excited to see that. And, and the Bombay chest I just sold, my, I kind of call it my patina dipped um, Bombay. And uh, when I did a nightstand and the top of it, I did also a really neat, and, and the green really popped because they use separate brushes. I'll put pictures of all those products on, uh, projects that I did on the back. And 
I know, sorry this is long, but I wanted to show you step by step the entire process. There's no guessings. You can duplicate this look uh, using any colors. Um, I just happen to love the collard green with the rust. Um, I'm gonna put my Dixie Belle affiliate link da right down below. So if you wanna check out any of these products, my affiliate link is down below. I'd really appreciate it if you use the link. Helps me out. Okay, and so like I said, down below I'll put my Facebook page, my blog page, um, my Dixie Bell affiliate link, it'll all be down below, so check it out. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Thank you.